one of the vice presidents at, uh, at Engine. We're one of the mm, leading companies working with blockchain in the entertainment space. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, 25 years in the game industry, like this guy. We're both old men game developers. Um, and I've seen it grow from you know, things on cassette tape to now an industry that outgrosses. This is, this is something to note or put on your banker hat. Games now outgross music, film, and TV combined, right? And there's another kicker. I'm gonna, my talk is going to be mostly around real world examples just to sort of talk about where I think things are going. Um, within that very large industry now, and this is not a projection, this is fact from say last year, both uh, legitimate and black market trading of game items, game objects, um, is about a hundred billion dollars a year, US. It's a very, very large amount of money, and it is very poorly regulated and not at all secure. It's about as secure as Craigslist, right? Hey, I'll meet you on Craigslist, and you just pay me, me $5,000, and trust me, I'll give you this thing. That's a lot of it. And so there's lots of people losing a lot of money, there's lots of fraud, and more importantly, the game industry being precious to me, many developers that are you know, having a tough time staying afloat. So what if I could give you some tools that you could use in your studio? Uh, Engine, our company, makes a free toolkit that I'm going to show you guys that is really built into... A little closer? All right. Little um, game developers use certain standardized game engines, for the most part, to do their work. We took the extra mile of taking our software and getting it into all these game engines so that a studio could just use it for free and away they go. Their items are on the blockchain. So this has the effect of taking, what if I could take that $100 billion a year Craigslist, right, and turn it into eBay, right, and then say, hey, we've also invented PayPal, by the way. And for that 3% transaction fee, which you, the developer, get to keep, you're good to go, okay? So that's one part of the example. The other part of the scenario, does that make sense or am I going too fast? Pretty much makes sense? Other example I wanted to give you is I was talking with a fellow from Hasbro recently. Who knows what Magic the Gathering is? It's an insanely popular collectible card game at its era, more pop. In fact, they actually own the IP of the technology or the IP behind how Pokemon works. So it's an insanely popular collectible card game. And um, what I want to say is I was talking with this executive from the company that owns that. And I'll tell you an example. In real life, there's exactly 1,100 Black Lotus cards. It's a super rare collectible card, kind of like a Crypto Kitty, right? In real life, one is worth around 30K because there's only 1,000 of them. And this gentleman said to me, wait a minute. When we play the digital version or the online version of Magic the Gathering and I get a Black Lotus card, it's worth zero, right? Because it could be hacked. I don't know if the one you have is really real or it's hacked or if you paid some guys overseas money for it. But what our technology allows you to do, stick that plugin in your game, and now you can say, there's only 1,100 of these digital Black Lotus cards. And what the, what the Hasbro exec said to me was, holy cow, like those things can now be worth 30K each as well, right? So those are sort of the pillars that I, of what I want to talk about. I hope that makes sense. Um, loosely, there's several pillars of engines technology that's designed to do things with that stuff or let, let a developer do things with it. One is uh, sort of this toolkit, right? It's a fully integrated plugin into these game engines. It's really easy to use. Uh, even Chris and I could create items for a game and put them on the blockchain. It's, we did that extra mile because we don't want engineers to have to, you know how it is, John. Six, six months later, we'll know if it works, right? We kind of got it all integrated. So that's a big part of our stuff, the engine uh, SDK and plugin. And it's integrated into uh, Unity, Minecraft, and soon to be Unreal a lot of the world's major game engines. Um, <clears throat> then, we created something called a special wallet. So, a lot of us are used to wallets that hold, say, cryptocurrency. But what we, do, we did is we made one kind of called a media wallet that can store, essentially, game objects. Things like movie passes, other kinds of rare goods. And so, we can do stuff with this. Most of you, if you haven't already, you can get the you can get the sort of loot box giveaway from me. But we can give away all different kinds of things using the blockchain. <clears throat> What's unique about this is 
I know when you've grabbed an item, right? I can track it. I can know that's been used once already, or you've already done this this week. So it provides an interesting kind of security. Um, last but not least, we have a new technology added to the toolkit called Engine Beam and Engine X, the Explorer. So I'll give you some examples. Here's where I'm going to go into an example mode. Um, let's say we're doing a collectible card game. Uh, and uh, Starbucks is going to sponsor it, right? So on the bottom of your Starbucks cup, scan it, right, using the engine wallet, and you get a unique item. You can do it up to once a day, right? Every time you go to Starbucks, you can get a game item. So maybe they're randomized, right? Maybe you get a common item, common item, um, but maybe you get a really rare item, right? And then maybe there's some gameplay component. So what is this? This is like the digital Happy Meal, right? Go to McDonald's, you get a plastic toy with your hamburger. Now we can give you a digital item. You know, it could be maybe you're going to gut a Willy Wonka gold pass to get into the premiere of the new Star Wars movie, like before it comes out, right? And then when you get there, maybe there's a double draw where, oh my God, you get to have dinner with Mark Hamill and you get a lightsaber, right? So you can do all kinds of neat ad promotions with this. It doesn't have to be game items that you give away, right? Um, you can the fact that if you made those items tradable as well, which is something we can do, you can now say, "Hey, trading is open at every Starbucks, Krispy Kreme, and Tim Hortons." So what is that? That's a ginormous amount of ad revenue for the developer, and Starbucks gets to look like a hero because they're not pushing you ads. They're just like, "Hey, we're, we have a free service, right? Kind of like free Wi-Fi at the airport, sponsored by Starbucks or something, right?" So that's one really neat example, um, being able to give away collectible game objects or to be able to give away collectible real-world objects and, if you want, to make them actually uh, un inseparable, be the same thing, right? So a um, couple more examples and then I'm going to give up the mic. Uh, we know that players like to trade because we know there's a ginormous black market Many games also feature that. That's you know what his company is probably going to be all about, right? This is the thing that players want. They will risk getting kicked off their favorite games. They will risk losing money on a, a fraudulent transaction. So, and we know the analytics are there to know what the numbers are each year. So really, we're just building that PayPal-like platform that allows uh, developers to gently monetize that and monetize it in a way that doesn't piss players off, right? In a way that's like, hey. We're keeping you secure. We're keeping you legit. You know, trading is no longer having to be in the black market. You can do it in-game. And just help us out. Give us a quarter whenever you trade or whatever it is, right? Um, one more example that I want to give uh, that's sort of more real-world-ish. Mm. Let's just say we go to the Harry Potter attraction at Universal, right? And we tell his kids, hey, there's, there's 10 secret codes hidden all over the park. Some of them are underwater, some of them are behind ivy, some of them are on the brick, but they're painted to look like brick. They're really hard to find. And if you go around the park and find all 10, we're going to give you something. So the kids go all around and they get them. When they come to the booth, the people have our tool called the blockchain scanner, right? Nginx. So the kids have the wallet, right? You've all seen, I think everybody saw it. If you haven't, I'll show you a picture of it. The kids say, Dad, I got all of them, right? Okay, so you go to the booth, you hand them your phone, they scan your phone, they can see everything and their stuff's sort of like a ham radio, dialed in to only look at universal Harry Potter goods. So it's very easy. What are your kids' names, Sean? All right, so let's just say Marina gets six and John gets four. They show them, right? With the scanner, they can look, well, they really did actually scan all these. It was today, right? You can't come back more than once per year for this, right? We can also see that. We can see that you got all of them, and we can see that you got them all the same day, and we can see that they're also related. The kids are related. So here's your wand, right? You have to share it, right? So that's a really powerful functionality we can do with this existing toolkit that we already have. Um, I'm going to wrap up, up now and say that basically some of our stuff is already out. Some of it is imminently coming out, like over the next month, two, right? And uh, we expect uh, adoption is very strong. We're seeing a lot of small studios, uh, probably about 20, 25 at this point, small games 
are making sort of CryptoKitty or a little bit bigger size games with our stuff. And uh, I'm looking forward to having some of the bigger studios that we're all friends with use our stuff as well. So um, most of it's free. And uh, we're also looking at a lot of advertising agencies wanting to, you know, whatever. Ford Trucks wants to do a promotion, right? So um, we're, we're looking at that as well. There's a lot of real world applications that aren't necessarily gaming. Um, that was a lot of information, probably really fast, but hope it all made sense. Back to you. Thanks, everybody.